Aloha, and welcome to Condo Insider. It's Thursday at three o'clock, and this is our typically show hour where we try to educate board members and people who live in a condominium on the various issues going on here in Hawaii and, and elsewhere. You're probably going to get sick and tired of hearing about this over the next year or more, but we're going to talk about reserve studies, the next frontier. This has become a very hot topic across the United States. Community Association Institute, the National Trade Organization, recently issued new public policy on reserve studies. Almost every legislature across the country that has any kind of condominium in it has invested in passing laws to tighten up the safety for condominiums for residents. And this all stems from the building clap, Champlain Towers South in Florida, Surfside, Florida to be exact, often it's called Surfside. And 98 people lost their lives because the building collapsed. And it collapsed because allegedly for years, the board of directors had tried to get the owners to approve a special assessment so they could repair the cracks and the structural failures, you know, and as you may or may not know, in concrete buildings, uh, beside the concrete embedded in it is rebar, that's the structural strength. All concrete is porous, water gets into the concrete, the rebar rust deteriorates, the structural integrity is lost, and depending on circumstances, in this case, the building collapsed, killing 98 people. Well. This has caused all sorts of interest and panic throughout the United States, and legislatures across the country have enacted laws. But in addition, CAI put out new public policy saying that this is what an association should do with respect to its reserve study. And I'm going to talk about that today because I'm going to give you my crystal ball of what's going to happen in the future and a little bit of what's already happened here in Hawaii. So you can understand how important this is. I would tell you, I'm predicting now that you're going to see more lawsuits, more claims, more problems coming down because of the fact of an association not maintaining its property. It may not result in a collapse in death, but there's going to be all sorts of problems. And I'm going to give you some examples here shortly. But let's talk about Florida just briefly. Okay, the building collapsed. People died. Work wasn't done. This board had tried for several years. It's tried so long ago that the original estimate to repair the building was nine million. At the time of the collapse, they had an estimate for over fifteen million to fix the building. Well, probably the building deteriorated further, which required more work. But inflation certainly took hold with respect to that. The issue is, when you look at Florida, the biggest problem is, and I want you to pay attention to this. In the Florida law, the condo statute, you have to have the owner's approval to assess the homeowners for the repair. So that means that $9 million or 15, depending when you were looking at the number needed, had to go to a vote of the homeowners and the homeowners would never approve the assessment because they were gonna to have to borrow the money and raise the maintenance fees a couple, two, three hundred dollars a month to fix the problem. So every year, the board or throughout the year would try to get the homeowners to approve the loan, and they couldn't get the owner's approval. And finally, just before the collapse, my understanding, they did get the homeowner approval, but it was too late. Even the roof that needed to be repaired, the regular roof, the contractor had refused to go on the property saying that the property was too dangerous to work on. Now, in some ways you can say, well, we tried, the board said they can, we tried, but uh, the owners wouldn't approve it. Well, it kind of ignores other things the board could do, like go to court and because of the safety and conditions and get an order and, and those types of things. But let's kind of relate this to Hawaii for a second. Under Hawaii's condominium law, the board has an obligation to maintain the property, period. 
And the law provides that in Hawaii, you can assess the owners. If it's $100 million, a $1 billion, whatever it is, the board has the right to assess the owners to make the repair and has an obligation to make the repair. Now, more times than not, when you get to these mega numbers, the board goes and wants to borrow the money if they don't have enough in reserves, which is more times than not the case. Um, for the board to borrow the money versus assess the owners, they have to have 50.0%, exactly half of the owner's consent to the loan. Now, more people approve the loan than don't approve the loan. So it's pretty easy to get to 50%. But think of it this way. From a liability point of view, as you as a board member, you have an obligation to maintain the property. If you have reports from engineers and experts saying you have a serious problem, and you have the authority to make the repair, you just have to assess the owners, which nobody wants. Do you expose yourself to liability if you haven't taken action under your fiduciary duty as a board member to fix the building? And I think you probably do. I think more of those lawsuits will, will come to bear. Now, <clears throat> I'd be the first to admit that some of the structural design is unique to the Champlain Tower itself. <clears throat> I don't think structural failure is going to be a commonplace thing. But people buy and sell property and they expect the unit to be in good shape. And to say there won't be litigation arriving out of this would not be true. But let's just review the fact that on Hawaii, Board of Directors has the unlimited authority to assess the owners and have the legal obligation to maintain the building. And so if they don't do that, and there is a catastrophic problem, or even a problem down the road, um, is the board member gonna be safe from the good faith argument that, well, I did the best I could? I don't think so. Because I'm an expert in a lot of lawsuits. And I can tell you now that there's more and more lawsuits coming about, which I'll discuss them later in the show, regarding reserves. So anyway, what happened with the legislature in Florida after they had this catastrophic problem, 98 deaths, a $1 billion lawsuit settlement? The legislature had to fix their problem with regard to owners um, having to approve the assessment. So let me ask you the question, what did the Florida legislature do? And I talked to the person in Florida who was my counterpart, who gave me the answer what the legislature did. They did absolutely nothing. They took the position at the legislature in the last legislative session that this is a one-off situation it's not going to happen easily and often, so they don't need to do anything about it. Now, that's what they did. But then the bad news is the public and everybody went nuts over this, demanding that they, they address this problem that's serious. So they went back into a special session, believe it or not, and they passed one law. And the one law basically said that associations over a certain number of years of age had to have a structural inspection of their building and have it filed with the building department. So there weren't any changes to the authority to borrow the money, but there were requirements that the building um, be inspected by a structural inspection, which I guess brings government involved if it fails the inspection on what's gonna happen next. Uh, <clears throat> and so that's kind of what happened in Florida. But let me tell you what happened in Hawaii. We ended up with Act 62. Act 62 has five parts to it, of which one of the five parts has to do with reserves. I would tell you as a preface to this, one of the other bills offered this year was to mandate structural inspections uh, for building. And I can tell you, I bet that's back next legislative session, and you're gonna see more efforts to require associations of a certain age and size or whatever it may be, uh, to have structural inspections. And so that's coming. It's not here today. But what did the Act 62 do to us with regard to reserve studies now? Effective January 1, 2023. It did basically three things. Number one, there's always been an argument a developer putting out a public report, a new building, underestimates reserve funds to theoretically and intentionally reduce the maintenance fees to make it easier to sell the units. Well, developers have 
previously relied on the FHA 10% minimum requirement, <clears throat> and, uh, 10 minimum requirement be towards reserves and the maintenance fees as kind of their scapegoat to say, well, we took 10% of the maintenance fees. Well, the new law, Act 62, says developers have to do a reserve study. So they can't just use some artificial number uh, based on the HUD guidelines and the FHA guidelines for, for maintenance fees. And frankly, I would have to tell you, I've read those guidelines. That's not exactly what they say, where they say 10% is adequate. But either way, let's just say that now developers have to do a reserve study. And many don't know. We've always heard the level one, two, and three for existing projects for reserve studies. There is a level four reserve study for developers. So this law says that as a part of those public reports, that in fact, developers must do a reserve study. So that number becomes more uh, accurate. I hate to use the word accurate because it's the forecast anyway, but it becomes more reliable for determining what the maintenance fees would be. Number two, it changed. If you know, there's two methods of doing reserve studies. Uh, I should say two funding methods. One is a percent funded basis, and what others call a cash flow basis. If you were doing the cash flow, you would project out 20 years. And the administrative rules said that any component that had a remaining life more than 20 years didn't have to be in the reserve study. Well, what Act 62 did was change it to 30 years. So that rule of the 20 years no longer exists. Certainly, when you have large items with long lives like elevator modernization that have a life of 30 years, you're going to have to include that in your calculations now from day one and not wait 10 years to do it. It's actually better for you in the long run because it's easier to pay for it over 30 years than 20 years of the cost should stabilize the reserve contributions in the future. But Act 62 basically said that if you choose the cash flow, which about 99% of all the condos in Hawaii choose, you have to do a 30-year project in effect of January 1, 2023. And of course, you do your budgets in the fall of 2022, so you got to be prepared to amend your reserve study to look at a 30-year uh, cycle. But the third thing they did, and I was frankly opposed to this, primarily because of the language. Basically, it says if you do your reserve study and it's not done by a reserve professional, then you must have that reviewed by a reserve professional at least every three years. So if you're in-house doing one or you're a management company that doesn't have accreditations in doing reserves and you have to do a reserve study, you're going to have to go to someone who's a reserve preparer. could be an architect engineer, could be a CAI reserve specialist, or could be a member of the Association of Professional Reserve Analysts, there's lots of people who do this, and you're gonna to have to have them review your reserve study to determine the sufficiency of the reserve study. And that's interesting because the language was so vague, it didn't really decide who a really reserve study professional is. Basically it calls a reserve study preparer and, and doesn't really put any real requirements on that. But then it doesn't address the thing. So you go and you have it reviewed and, and the guy who reviews it says your reserve study is no good. And you say, well, thank you for your opinion. Thank you for reviewing it. We're going to keep the one we got. We're not going to do anything about it. And that's kind of the problem. It didn't really give much instruction or specifics to condominiums and what they have to do. Now, I want to talk about this some more. And we're at the halfway point. So we're going to take a one-minute break and come right back. And I'll give you the rest of the story. Aloha. <laughs> 
welcome back to Condo Insider talking about the next frontier reserve studies. And before we took the break, I talked briefly uh, about this issue that the uh, in the reserve study that uh, well, I lost my train of thought for a second. Let me look. That you had this three year requirement uh, to have it reviewed, and it didn't really specify what that really means. And so, what it means to boards is potential liability. Think of it this way. If, in fact, you have an obligation to maintain the building, and if, in fact, you have a reserve study, you did yourself, and if, in fact, a preparer who's qualified said the reserve study is no good, and you do nothing about it, now there's an assessment down the road, or a new buyer down the road says, how come you have to raise my fees 25%? You didn't collect enough in the beginning. Have you potentially exposed yourself to liability? Well, it's unknown. This is all brand new, but I would say that there's going to be some lawyer out there who's going to say, look, you have an obligation under the statute to fix the building. You didn't fix it. You did a reserve study. Your reserve study was not any good according to a reserve preparer who looked at it and you didn't do anything about it. So you have some personal liability with respect to this because it could be considered gross negligence or intentional and willful conduct. And of course, there's defenses for that. But to say that you're free and clear from this, because nothing is going to protect you better than doing a professional reserve study and doing what it says. Now, what I find is that the future is very clear to me. Next year, you're going to see structural requirements. I hate that because every time there's a problem, everybody wants to pass a requirement. So you had the sprinkler fire safety requirement. Now you have the structural requirement. Now you have the city and county of Honolulu wanting you to have to do all these studies on an electricity usage requirement. You know, then you have the proposed study that all associations have to evaluate the EV charging station needs and requirements. You know, uh, it, it gets to be, this is expensive. And it doesn't mean that we shouldn't do some of these things, but to try to litigate this or should legislate this into a mandate that all this has to be done by a certain amount of time is is foolish you know first of all you look at the number of buildings under the new city uh ordinance where you have to have this study of your electricity usage this is commercial and residential buildings there aren't enough people who are in the town to do this in the time frame they've established it so i'm, I'm not a big fan of government uh mandating some of those issues. I do think we do need, we need to clean up the reserve study issue a little bit because the practice has been, we'll do a reserve study, but we got that task done. We're not raising maintenance fee and kick the can down the road to a future board or a future set of owners. But I can guarantee you what you're gonna see in the next year or two. Structural inspections will be mandated. And number two, you will be required at some level to have a professional reserve study prepare, do your reserve study, and you will have an obligation to implement that study versus uh, this grayness we have within the statute today. And it's gonna become a bigger item. So I would say to you up front that, I mean, I'm gonna talk a, bit, a minute about the common mistakes people make in reserve study and the common problems and some of the litigation. But if, you, if you're honest about it, and you accept the fact you live in a condo and you have to maintain the building, if you accept the fact the statute requires you to maintain the building, you may not like the answers of what you need to do to maintain the building. You really don't have an excuse not to maintain it. I mean, certainly your property values are going to be affected by how well you maintain it. And uh, I've seen so much misuse of the reserve study concept because people are kicking the can down the road. And let me tell you, my number one belief in future litigation, my number one belief of the major mistake that condominiums make in their reserve study, and they do it every day, they blame it on inflation. And here's an example. I'm an expert on a matter with the condominium, was a fight over the reserve study. And it's been, uh, now managed by a uh, arbitrator, I'm going to say, a person who the agreement was to have the arbitrator manage the uh, final decision. 
Well, here's the problem. So if you look at the annual contributions of that reserve study in 2022, rounding it off, it was about $100,000 a year, which would be divided by 12 and by the number of units or percentage of common interest, whatever it may be. Well, if you look at it, because that 100,000 a year didn't give them sufficient cash in future years, they would go into the negative, which they can't do by law. What they did is they proposed an increase the reserve contributions every year of 3%. So when you look at that over 30 years, that 100,000 a year becomes 600,000 a year. Now think about that. That means the reserve study contribution, which in that case was about $100 a month per unit, would now be $600 a month per unit, plus the maintenance fee increases, which are going to have inflationary things put on it. What people don't realize, or people refuse to admit, or people look the other way, is when you do a reserve study, the software itself is using the future value of that component to be replaced, that roof or that paint shop. So since it's using the future value and the administrative rules define if the future value is $20,000 and it's got a 20-year life, you'd be putting $1,000 spread evenly to all the owners and the multiple calculations you do to create the reserve study. Well, if you say, well, I'm not going to do that like this 3% does, I'm only going to collect 800 this year, then 850 next year, whatever it may be, you're really kicking the can down the road to force yourself to meet these components that you're not addressing now, that 30-year elevator job. You're kicking that can down the road, so you're going to cost you a whole lot more in the future as evidenced by the example. From one hundred thousand to six hundred thousand dollars, where the if in fact they were today put one hundred thirty thousand a year into the reserves, that number would stay constant for thirty years. Now, what I see is happening is that I was, I was involved as an expert on a lawsuit on this, where in fact the lawyer argued that that's unfair. You're not collecting the amount you're supposed to according to administrative rules. It's supposed to be a straight line, even number. And what you're doing is taxing future people. So the old people or the people who want to buy and sell get out before the damage is done. And I think there's a lot of legitimacy to that. I think you're going to see, particularly as reserve studies have to be more perfected with better data, you're going to see more people um, trying to kick the can down a row, which is going to result in lawsuits. As an example of that, um, I was an expert on a Maui project where a new owner bought a in a project and made that argument saying, hey, I, I just moved in and I'm getting an assessment because the reserve study was inaccurate. Why should I? You should have been collecting that from my, buy, my seller or from some other owners who sold prior to me buying into this. And so in that case, it's going to be an argument that's going to come forward. And, and, and as much as it may be a bitter pill to swallow, I think it's important we all recognize we have an obligation to collect on an even basis for 30 years, the amount of money projected to uh, fix the building and maintain the building. And part of that has got to be that uh, you do a good job of looking at the components, remaining lives, the replacement cost. It doesn't make any sense to argue that uh, we have a good reserve study. If you've left out the central air conditioning system or the roof or, or something else, you need to, as the statute requires, you'd identify all the components, actually over $1,000 in value. You need, you need to put some energy in this. Most boards get the, their budget and the reserve study, look at it quickly. Are we raising the maintenance fees? Yes, no. And, and they pass it without much discussion on the individual line items and components within the reserve study. It's important that the board do that, that they really take a look at that. And as I said, I'd be hiring a professional from a larger scale condominium to give me a, a, a base. And it doesn't mean you're screwed because even if you find you haven't done the best job, you're better off changing it over the next two or three years to get it to where it should be because you have time over 30 years than to try maybe to do it all the first year. There are ways and techniques you can use quickly and early in the reserve study, bring the number up to where it should be 
and give the owners notice that over the next three years, we're going to do the following in my example uh, to get us on an even keel. But if you don't think for a moment this reserve state thing is going to hit the fan, um, it's going to hit the fan because of the fact that uh, I do a lot of reserve study work and I countlessly look at buildings that have deferred maintenance that the reserve studies are inadequate and they're not thinking it through and it's, well, I'll get off the board this year and let the next board, next year's board worry about it. Well, this is going to come back to, to affect all of us because I think this is going to be uh, the new frontier is going to be condos have to do a reserve study over some number of units, let's say 50 units. It has to be done by a professional that has one of the following qualifications, reserve specialist, APRA, architect, engineer. The board has to implement the reserve study on an even level basis. I think there's gonna be more and more requirements in there. I think more of that will erode your good faith argument where you're not obligated to uh, do personally for any of the damages that may result out of this. So that's kind of my message today. We have about 50 seconds left, it looks like. The new frontier for reserves is something that the boards and homeowners need to look at carefully. It's going to affect your property values. It will affect your maintenance fees because you're going to have to get in line to what the real requirements are. And at the end of the day, if you don't do that, I think you're going to see litigation. You're going to see claims of personal liability. And you're going to see all sorts of stuff hit that are not going to be something you're going to want to be involved in. So anyway, a hui ho and always nice sharing with you my thoughts. Sorry, I have to bring you bad news, but this reserve study is the next frontier and next challenge for condominium association. Mahalo. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.